What is up, everybody? How are you? We're live. Look at this. Stunning, stunning, stunning. It is just the most perfect, easiest, quickest, Southeast Asian-inspired stir-fry that I know of. A version of this that I've been making for my family for years, because as, as long as you have a couple things in your pantry, you can make this any day of the week. Um, and the marinade is perfect. And once you taste this dish, you will say to yourself, ah, that's what I've been spending all that money in restaurants for. Now, I got a great reminder about this dish. Uh, the other, oh, for, I'm forgetting, I haven't been live in a couple of weeks. A big thank you to our sponsors, the folks at Shun, who provide us with this lovely cutlery, and the good folks at Florida Canya, the world's most sustainable rum. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, to our sponsors. Um, and thank you for all your patience the last couple weeks. I was away shooting season two of Family Dinner. Uh, more on that later on. Uh, but yeah, so I couldn't be doing certain stuff. Uh, so this dish, I make this at home all the time. Uh, I live out in the country. I cannot get food delivered to me. So I'm, I'm on my own. I'm right where you guys are uh, in terms of, you know, I can't always just call uh, the great takeout place. So I started tinkering around with recipes and I hadn't made this in like, I don't know, six months. It just disappeared from the family catalog. And lo and behold, uh, a friend of mine who cooks this kind of food all the time, the incredible uh, Leah Cohn. Leah has restaurants uh, in New York City. She has a new cookbook out. Um, if uh, I should have run to my office and, and pulled it out. But anyway, uh, Leah is the uh, chef owner of Pig and Cow and a couple other restaurants in New York City. And uh, she posted something. This was one of her family recipes. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's essentially the exact same thing, which is no surprise because people think chefs like invent stuff. You know, we don't. We may add an extra teaspoon of this, a little more of this to our taste. Uh, some people may do this dish with fish. Other people do it with shrimp. I do mine with chicken. Um, but, you know, these are just classics of uh, the Thai uh, culinary catalog that have just been interpreted by different families for generations. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to get a bowl and I want to put my diced chicken in there. Uh, this is two or three chicken thighs. I usually count on two chicken thighs per person with this dish, right? And about a half cup of sticky rice. And then I'll put a couple of little things around it, some steamed veg or sauteed veg, uh, a salad, etc. cetera. Um, but it's super, super simple. I get out my blender and I put in my brown sugar. Recipe for this is on the website at andrewzimmern.com. Um, I like to put, um, you know, a lot of hot chili in there. Um, if I had the availability to get a uh, uh, prick, P-R-I-K, which are the small little Thai uh, hot chilies, I would use those. Um, but here, I'm taking a red Fresno chili that must be seeded because the seeds and uh, all the little connective tissue uh, is bitter. And this is a Serrano chili, which while a little spicier, the seeds are very citrusy and delicious. And when I use one of each for a few cups of chicken and this amount of marinade, I, and by the way, this, this is enough marinade for two to four portions at least, right? Uh, and I add my fish sauce. And I'm going to add my garlic cloves, two or three of those. I'm going to add a little bit of oil, peanut oil, or toasted rape seed oil. Rape seed is what the rest of the world calls canola oil. And uh, the Chinese make a toasted rapeseed oil that they use to uh, wok fry in that already has that breath of the dragon in it. It's absolutely delicious and it lends that mild uh, smoky flavor to the dish. Put that down in there. Set that aside. Now I have to deal with my ginger. Now, for those of you that have watched me cook for a long time, 
you know this isn't a spoon, this is a ginger peeler. You can literally take this and scrape off the skin, allowing you, and it, the edge of the spoon goes in between the little knobs. So when I take away the ginger skin, what's left behind is all of the usable parts of the, not some of the usable parts, right? All of the usable part. I can just get 100% usable. And I like to take off a piece, you know, everyone talks about golf ball size, right? Well, I know golf balls aren't misshapen like that, but that's about a golf ball size worth. And then all I'm going to do is just slice this. And the reason is, because some of you are probably asking yourselves, Andrew Zimmern, if you're putting it in a gosh darn blender, why the holy hand grenade are you putting the knife to the ginger and cutting it up? Well, the reason is the ginger's fibrous, and I don't want the, the blades here in this machine to have to overwork itself, right? I mean, that would just be absolutely awful. So once I have this, at this stage, I want to just turn it on and go nice and slow. I have this on the lowest setting. And then on the next highest one. And then on the next highest one. And then on the next highest one. And then on whatever set, there's always a setting that says like liquefy. That's where I am right now. What kind of peppers can you use if you don't like spicy? Uh, oh, if you don't like spicy, um, you still want the flavor of pepper. So I would probably go, if I had people coming to my house that didn't like spicy food, I'd probably use a poblano chili. I know it's Mexican, but it has just a warmth to it and you still that, get that delicious, delicious pepper flavor. So I'd use, I think I'd go with that one. All right, so great question, by the way. Um, this is such an ideal weeknight dinner favorite. And I just pour, you can see I have enough marinade, more than enough for this. And I usually let it sit for about 30 minutes at room temperature. Now, that 30 minutes, I'm usually yelling at my son to set the table or doing it myself or returning a phone call or getting my rice going or making the salad or the veg or whatever it is. But the key thing here is that in the 30 minutes that this is sitting, it's not going to spoil, but it is going to come to room temperature, right? And coming to room temperature is ideal because we want it to start cooking right away, right away, when we put it into our saute pan, right? Now, I happen to have a couple little goodies to garnish with. You don't need to garnish them with the same things, uh, but sesame seed, black or toasted white, um, little sprigs of cilantro. Some people dig it, some people don't. Um, Toasted uh, cashews, I think, are great with this. Uh, sometimes I crush them up. But the key flavor ingredient here in this dish is the Thai basil or holy basil. Now, Thai basil, like other members of the basil family, smell like they belong in the licorice family. But this has a sweetie, pungent quality to it that just makes you, I mean, Joe Malone made a, a Thai basil -y, uh, men's fragrance years and years and years ago, like 15 years ago, that I bought because I just loved it so much. Joe Malone, botanical fragrances for men and women. Um, I, I adore it. What, and why is that funny? It's not funny. It's it is fun. funny. It's not funny. I'm, I'm talking about things that are deeply personal, personal to me. This is Abby. Abby is new. It's her first week here. She's just getting used to my sense of humor, uh, which is epic, Abby. 
Um, but Thai basil is so wonderful to cook with. And unlike, I mean, some people, I see them rummaging through the basil packs at the store because they're trying to find perfect ones to put one leaf on top of a fucking mozzarella salad. Get over it. Ugly food is better. Don't get into analysis. Don't try buying perfect stuff. Just buy stuff that tastes good. The, by the way, that little package of basil in the plastic at the supermarket costs like $92. This whole bunch of Thai basil at our local Asian market costs like a dollar. Right now, I know it's summer, it's easy to grow it locally and stuff like that, but you can just cut handfuls of this stuff and you can use it in all of your stir fries. It's absolutely remarkable. And I'm gonna use all of this basil in here. I use these basil leaves almost like a vegetable. Where would you get Thai basil from? Any Asian market, they're carrying them now in Latin markets. And guess what? They're even carrying them at big box stores because everybody is loving the flavor of Thai basil. Right, We're not quite at the point yet where we have uh, Thai basil stir fries served in gas stations the way we see sushi nowadays, right, or burritos, but we're getting there because we all know, and anybody who's watching this is in there nodding their head, a quick and easy, not too spicy Thai basil focused stir fry is just about universally beloved by anyone, kids, grandmas, people my age. All right. Uh, Sticky rice. Sweet rice. Sweet rice long grain. Sweet rice new crop. All the same stuff, okay? It is a, a unique dish. It, it's not rice that's sticky, small s. It's proper name, sticky rice, okay? Buy a Thai product if you can, right? Because they have, they're the ones who are using sticky rice the most. Um, don't need some fancy machine. Don't need to measure cups. This is what I love about sticky rice. Not only is it just delicious, not only does it hold together so you can grab pieces of it and dip it into things, but it's so easy to make. So you take a couple of cups of sticky rice or a few handfuls, whatever, right? And you soak it in a bowl with cold water overnight in the fridge. The next day, you take your vessel. This is designed to make Thai sticky rice and you bring the water to a boil, and you place this basket. By the way, this costs like 10 bucks, these cost like five bucks. And you put this in, it makes a nice seal. You load your drained rice, your drained uncooked sticky rice into a cheesecloth or a towel or however you wanna do it, and you stick it in there and you bring it to a boil and you cook it for 25, 30, 40 minutes, check it every once in a while. And you will literally pull out this. And I've already been nibbling and eating some, but you can see what this rice is like. And it does have that faint glutinous appearance to it. The kernels all cook up separately. Look at how beautiful that is. But if you want to squeeze it together and dip it into a sauce, you can, and that's the beauty of this rice, just absolutely breathtaking. And anyone who's ever been to Thailand has tasted this, especially with all those great street foods because you get your food in a little plastic bag, you get your Thai rice in a little plastic bag or a banana leaf, and you can bind them together and just eat them with your hands. Okay, so let's turn up the temperature on our pan. I do, I do grow my own herbs. Do you know why? Because they're so easy. Window box, front of the house, side of the house, you don't need a lot of space. And the great thing is there are a lot of herbs like my mint or some of my thymes and oregano and rosemary that are perennial, right? So they just keep popping up every single year. My mint runs crazy. I have so much I don't know what to do with it. Can you sub Thai noodles for sticky rice? Well, if you can eat... You can eat this dish with anything. You don't need any rice, you don't need anything. I just happen to like to serve this with sticky rice and it was a good opportunity. And I serve it, by the way, with glass noodles, bean thread noodles, rice stick noodles. I mean, you name it, I serve it with it. Um, I'll actually put this into, I know this sounds crazy, but into a soft roll and eat it kind of like a sandwich or a banh mi with like some pickled veg. It's incredible. Um, so anyway, we have some Rapeseed oil, doesn't burn at high temperature. 
And I am going to just let that get nice and hot. And then we have, you know, this is only marinated for like six, seven minutes. That's okay. Because there's enough of the sauce that clings to the chicken. And I chose this pan for a reason. Can anyone guess why I chose this pan? Well, I'll clue you in because I know it holds two, di two diced chicken thighs. This extra marinade here, don't, you don't have to pour it over anything. It goes, goes away. But remember, the volume of marinade in the recipe will marinate up to five or six chicken thighs. Here I use two or three. And I want that to get a nice crusty brownness on one side before I make any other moves. But my next couple of moves are going to be adding the shallots. And I do that when I stir this dish because I don't want to cook them for too long. Then my handful of Thai basil uh, to finish. Uh, Madeline, do you want to grab me a nice bowl? Similar to that one in size. Questions, comments, criticisms, anything? Um, when did you start playing disc golf? I started playing disc golf 29 years ago. Ten years ago, I was really good. Now I am not uh, good. Don't don't feel sorry for me. Um, but you know, so many years in the kitchen, I have a degenerative tendon uh, disease. All my tendons are breaking down. Um, those are calluses. Uh, that sort of lighter colored stuff just from years of working in the kitchen. And my right hand, I can't close it all the way. And you need to be able to do that for a good backhand grip and it's hard for me to pinch, so I'm a hook and hucker. Uh, it's, but even though I suck now, I really like to play uh, the sport. But you can see, look at how much bigger this hand is than that one. And it's not because it's more muscly, it's just permanently damaged and swollen. I know, it's weird. Um, but yeah, I, I absolutely love disc golf. And the reason I'm assuming that person is asking me is that last week I participated in the uh, Disc Golf Pro Tour Celebrity Pro-Am at uh, Ben Askren's uh, Funky Farms uh, Disc Golf Course, and we had an absolute blast. They had a whole bunch of celebrities, but then they had 10 of the 14, 15 best players in the world, and in the first round of action, I was paired with uh, Kevin Jones and Ricky Wysocki, and in the final round, uh, I was playing as a duo with James Conrad, the current reigning world champion. It's kind of, kind of awesome for me. All right, now look what's happened here. Look at the caramelization that we got from that brown sugar and the fish sauce and everything and those peppers and the garlic and the ginger. That's what you're looking for. And then we just want to sprinkle these on top. We don't have to break them up. We're going to be cooking this for a little bit. Some people like to add their cashews on top, like a garnish. Other people like to do this, let some of that cashew nut oil go in to this dish. Notice the one thing that I'm not adding is salt because I have it in the fish sauce. Right? And I'm just going to let this cook and lower the heat a little bit because I want that chicken to start to really get oomphy. Um, People are wanting to know why you're not using a wok. Oh, gosh. The reason that I'm a great question, the reason that I'm not using a wok is that if I'm doing a wok stir fry dish, I feel sometimes the audience disconnects from me. I. I use a wok at home, but I also have Japanese and Thai wok pans that are like small woks, all different sizes, so I can do small portions. Um, but with something like this, 
I feel if I'm doing it in a pan, you guys have less opportunity to tune out or say, hey, you know, I don't have a wok, I can't do this dish, because you all have an eight inch, saute, 10 inch saute pan. Um, if you have a wok, by all means, it's a great time to use it. Um, I, know we, I know we have it coming up. I'm on TikTok, by the way. I just had my first viral video, I found out. Um, but uh, I feel so proud. And no, it's not me dancing or like calling out someone else in the club or anything like that. It's just, it's just me talking about anchovies. Um, but we have one coming up where I actually show you uh, my Thai and Japanese uh, saute, smaller woks, which is what I would most likely uh, do with this. What's your favorite Thai dish? My favorite Thai dish, usually the one that I just got done uh, eating. I'm a big fan of all of the uh, steamed whole fish or the fish that are, that are poached with uh, pickled chilies. Um, I'm a big larb guy. Um, a crispy duck larb, where it's done right, is absolutely fantastic. Um, classic noodle dishes like pad thai and pad siu, I'm, I'm big on, because when they're done right, again, that, that simplicity is where it's all at. Um, what else do I, I mean, gai tong ka, I mean, I'm a chicken soup dude from way back when, and I probably make uh, gai tong ka, also called tom ga, tom ka gai. Um, Oh, I probably make it once a month, and we have a really amazing recipe that was given to me by a Thai grandmother on our website at andrewzimmern.com for that classic. And oh, I, I just made it and posted it a couple weeks ago. Um, uh, yam no, uh, grilled beef uh, salads uh, with toasted rice powder. Love them. Insane. Do you own an air fryer? I do own an air fryer. I use it for pizza rolls because the gentleman that invented the pizza roll uh, DM'd me. He slid into my DMs and when I was complaining about the perfect way to cook them, he said air fryer. So I think I go six, seven minutes at like 400 and then like five, six minutes at 350 and they're crispy and they don't explode and they're hot on the inside. That way you squirt your mouth more often. Do you want it? Oh, sorry. Uh, do you want to talk about your very particular Totino's pizza roll habits that you discussed in that Life Hacker article about you? <laughs> I don't know, Emily. Do I? <laughs> uh, it's a guilty pleasure. Gas station pizza, toaster, strudel pizzas. I mean, I love pizza. I love the high-end amazing stuff. But, you know, give me really crappy pizza any day of the week. I just, it, you know, it's... It's an old saying, but there's no such thing as bad pizza or bad sex. Uh, okay, let's talk about uh, how often pizza rolls are cooked in my house. Let's just say that we buy them in big bags. I'm a teenager, that's my excuse. Uh, chicken is done, just in the nick of time so I don't embarrass myself anymore. And all I wanna do is lay this on top Turn this off, turn everything off, and you can smell. That addition of the holy basil there. And I'm going to take a piece of our rice, put that on the side. Sprinkle that with a little bit of black sesame. Let people eat some of the cilantro with that. Maybe wedge my lime there. And, oh. My, my grandmother's spoon. People are wondering how's your dog doing? Oh my gosh, uh, we need to talk about that because I feel so bad. Um, here's why. Um, I have not been keeping up as well as I should with Luca's uh, Instagram page. And he is doing so many funny things, I really want to uh, clue him in to the whole social media thing, which he digs, trust me. 
the pets dig it. Uh, but I think you'll really dig it too. So there's the fresh one. There's the old one, but look at how glistening and beautiful that is. And when you taste that, you have that wonderful, wonderful Thai quartet of flavor, right? Sour, salty, bitter, sweet. And if you want the quintet, add spicy to that. What defines Thai cooking is that they go for an abundance of flavors and usually at least the main four have to be present, right? Sour, salty, bitter, and sweet. And we have all that in here. Spicy, not all Thai food is spicy. Much of it is, but not always. So that's that sort of fifth flavor. And then the sixth one being umami, if you really want to go for the home run. But because uh, Thai cooking has so many ingredients that naturally have umami, uh, almost every dish that they make is loaded with it. So this is... You know, this is the simple reality of this incredible, incredible stir fry. Whether you choose to put your nuts in early or not, it's pungent with that Thai basil. It's not too spicy. The nuts are wonderful. The sticky rice makes it perfect. Mm. Someone asked me what that was. <laughs> what whether, was that? whether it's whether it's a baseball or whether it's a golf shot, it's out of sight. It's in the bleachers. It's gone. It ends the game. It clears the bases. Anyway, this stuff right here. Look for it. It's on our website at andrewzimmerman.com. Um, oh, and literally can be made in minutes. In minutes. If you have this stuff around, minutes. Um, yes, sometimes at night, if I really want to be on top of it, I'll start the marinade and the chicken and let it sit. So when I come home from work, all I have to do is, you know, slice my shallots and brown the stuff and pull some Thai basil. This is the star of this dish. But if you don't have it, don't let it stop you from making this. You can add other herbs in there. Add mint and cilantro in equal parts, gives you a whole different flavor. Or just don't use the Thai basil if you don't have it and make the dish anyway and see how it is and then get some. Make sense? All right, one last question. What else do we have? Uh, have you seen Roadrunner? Have I seen Roadrunner? Yes, I've seen Roadrunner. We should probably talk about this next Thursday, where we'll also be live, and do so more at the beginning of it. If you're, if you are not, if you're not aware, uh, Neville Morgan, uh, who's an incredible documentary filmmaker, I love some of his movies, uh, he did uh, 30 Feet from Stardom, which I absolutely adored about backup singers, done a lot of great movies, uh, did a documentary on uh, Anthony Bourdain that debuted at the New York Film Festival a couple of weeks ago and theatrically was released last week. It's created some controversy because he used AI to recreate Bourdain talking about himself at a point in time when he wouldn't have been alive to have done it. Um, it doesn't bother me. The spirit of what he was trying to do um, doesn't detract from the film. Some people like it, some people don't. Some people want to know more about the, the part of uh, Bourdain's life that uh, Morgan stays away from, which is his relationship with Asia Argento. Um, but I think it's an incredible look at the most, arguably the most popular pop culture figure of the last uh, 25 years in America. Certainly since 2000. I mean, it was right after, I think it was 2002, 2003, something like that, uh, that his article uh, came out in the New Yorker that eventually uh, became his uh, first big uh, best-selling book um, and then the rest was history. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a lot to digest there with, uh, with Roadrunner. But I believe it's important. I'll leave you with this. It's important for everyone to see for one reason. We have to look at people's lives, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And if we don't face that, we're never gonna really lean into everyone's sort of like Instagram mojo. Everyone's saying, and I believe it's true, it's okay to be okay. 
it's okay to not be okay, right? Either one. But we've got to lean into the uncomfortable stuff. And sometimes that means looking at uncomfortable parts of people's lives, parts that hurt, right? We got to name it. We got to say it. You know, he, he was one of my favorite human beings on planet Earth. He was, he will be talked about a hundred years from now. You can't say that about everyone. And yet at the same time, we also have to say he took his own life because it's important to understand that it's important for people to talk about it. It'll help people and maybe some uh, don't have to go down that same route or maybe we can take some pain away from some people or just help some fans understand them a little better. So maybe we'll talk about it a little more next week. Um, I love you people. Thank you for being patient while we went on a live hiatus. Uh, thank you to the team for putting great content up, great recipes that we shot ahead of time for you so that you would have a regular recipe each week to get inspired by. Uh, thanks to our sponsors, the good folks at Shun Cutlery. I've always wanted to do that. Uh, <laughs> and if I, if I still drank booze, I would just open this up and slam half this bottle because that's how good Florida Kanye rum is. Talk about a dark joke for an alcoholic. <laughs> uh, I'm Andrew Zimmern, and I haven't had a drink in 30 years, but if I was going to start, it would be with Florida Kanye rum. Uh, we're going to get a case of the giggles here. I love you people. Be kind to one another. See you next Thursday. Thank you.